So, Bella. Mm. Or Isabella for professional wizards. So, <laughs> not that I possess any. <laughs> no, what? Ollie, don't! No! I didn't mean that seriously! Put your hand down! <laughs> Ollie is not hitting Bella. Sorry, that was poor taste. <laughs> poor taste, in poor taste. Well, I guess to give a quick full on one on your practice, Bella's got quite a considerate and beautiful painting practice, but you are one of the drawing cartel. <laughs> Yeah. So I guess we could kind of deconstruct a few of the ways you operate. Stop making drawing. me sound like a drug lord. <laughs> uh, Perhaps we could chemically yes. separate yeah. your painting and drawing practices. Yes, please draw the official operations. <laughs> yeah, so I guess, you know, I don't see the... <laughs> the fact that I'm in the drawing department is kind of more a political choice than anything. <laughs> um, painting right. departments at art school uh, are, yeah, full of sort of, I don't know... Talking to you? <sighs> Yes, often there's not a whole lot of like painting that goes on in them and then there's this kind of Yeah, look drawing departments generally pretty loose open-minded It's nice to have conversations about what drawing is and can be because really it can be anything Yeah, I call myself I guess a, a drawer first and foremost That's where I've come from that lineage of observational drawing and then you know you get into painting and mm, so I guess your current practice in games primarily still art, right? Yeah. But it's it's not stale in my eyes the way you go about <laughs> it. It's 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 more of a personal thing than a, a still art thing. Yeah. In that you make your objects and they yeah. think it's in your studio and home. You know, part of the conversation that I'm having in my master's project is, you know, the the potential of the still life genre, just as you did. It's easily dismissed in... Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. It's, you use the word stale and and I think that's, that's important because that is, you know, the view of still life often is that it's something outdated or it doesn't have as much potential as other subject matter to explore the nature of, of life, really. You know, if that's, if we can sort of boil down art as something that does that. There are often even just more complex ideas than representation. Well, I think exactly. People see something and they go, well, that's all. Exactly. Is. And that's, you know, and that's the trouble with making any sort of representational work especially representational work that is from observation but I think that still life as a genre is uh, a really good vessel in order to kind of explore ideas of connection as we were talking about earlier and of feeling I suppose and feeling through pictures and that's what I would sort of put as my tagline before I get too much into the kind of like jargon of my thesis, you know. <laughs> I guess that's it. You know, making connections between, you know, human and non-human. Not in a like fucking stellar way, but in a... <laughs> um, in a considered and thoughtful space that relies on t time being given to just being with things. Yeah, I can imagine, again, harking back to where we are in time. Obviously, Maddie, with your practice, that thing, material connection, it is so crucial to people over the last year. But I can imagine in still life too, if there was a time that mm. an exploration of still life would become a very important thing. I mean, part of the reason I like the practice so much is because I became acquainted with it right when I was discovering the home I live in now mm. and trying to gain a sense of uh, personal identity space yeah it definitely like it's kind of convenient that there was this like my time with this project has coincided with with covid in a way because yeah i think a lot of artists did turn to the their immediate surroundings and you know we've just seen the release of a new uh still life book featuring quite a few australian artists also called australian artists and yeah i think that that speaks to the 
sort of seeing the necessity in engaging with our spaces and our environments in a in a meaningful way you know and and not taking kind of anything for granted but taking every opportunity to be observant and mindful you know of what spaces we're occupying on that yeah i'm curious to know from you maybe that uh like it was a weird thing for me the personal space thing when COVID first hit i think it was for everyone did anything change for you with mail art when COVID first hit did you think oh man you would think that that would be a great time for mail art but the pandemic slowed down mail deliveries as well mm. and actually australia post took the opportunity to reduce letter deliveries Mm. And like post box clearance times used to be six o'clock on every day except Saturday, and now it's four o'clock just Monday to Friday. Right. So I, I mean, I enjoy mail art. I enjoy posting things, whether it's pandemic or not. <laughs> um, but yes, it's like that isolation that you feel um, is conducive to to sending things or making mm. or thinking about people connection that. Like, making that connection i just think it's it's unfortunate like the, the uh, questions of the economy are making it's not like we're saying oh we need to invest more in things like the postal service or um, that improve people's lives or like pay nurses a decent wage or whatever you know from the economy's point of view like they're if they're taking advantage to slash they're t- taking the opportunity to slash and burn everything but yeah it's like practice itself is more crucial than ever to, mm. to, to connect but you can do that I mean like you can do that probably I still would say probably like while spending time writing and whilst like spending time with your surroundings like Bella does if it's still lives it's like still lives either one um, then but you still need to be able to get together in a big group like mm. the rally for Palestine today to have that sense of community to be able to build a big community mm. you can't just think you could do that through um, posting a letter to everybody. And you can't do, do that either by posting a status update on Facebook. Why either. are you laughing? Oh, I sent Maddie a text yesterday when he said, do you mind <laughs> if we start at 11 and go into a Palestine rally? And I said, yeah, you go get those evil Jews, Matt. <laughs> it says here, Zionists, Solly. They're yeah. Zionists. They're Zionists, <laughs> yeah. It's not that they're Jews. It's, it's not, not that they're Jewish. <laughs> It's no. not a religious issue. It's not. It's an issue of colonization. No. Absolutely. It's what I mean. It's just <laughs> laughing at, at your ignorance, Ollie. At my ignorance. Yeah. It's not even that I know nothing about the thing. It's just that I seem to colloquially reduce myself to <laughs> absolute <laughs> madness. Yeah. <laughs> for no particular reason. Anyway. Yes. Zionists. And it's great to see that it's obvious that there's Jewish people that are pro Palestine as it mm. as it should be. It's not a yeah, it's a, not a religious I mean there's yeah, it's a very complicated Yeah religion and potentially involved. a little beside the point to get into <laughs> yeah. like the details of it. I might just bring you back to what you're saying about building community and the necessity of that. Yeah, the necessity to um, to be able to demonstrate out in the open with mm. all sections of society coming together, and that's again that's something that um, our own neoliberal government has taken advantage of by like banning protests and outdoor gatherings when they've been demonstrated to be completely safe. Mm. You know, um, and it's more like the indoor activities of work, which they're happy to go. They're happy for people to go into their offices and supermarkets and all of that to keep society running but when it's an outdoor protest against the government suddenly it's unsafe and no singing or dancing yeah and no singing no or dancing chanting. <laughs> that's voodoo people <laughs> well uh Bella, you touched on something the other day when we were kind of arranging to come here today and that was that as an artist it's important for you that time put into things is evident in the output I don't know if that's butchering what you were saying. God, I can't remember what I was saying. For me as an artist, it, like, it's yeah. important that my artwork shows labour to yeah. a degree. Yeah, I've yeah. yeah. spent time doing what I do. And you, you just touched on it again before when about sitting there and spending time with mm. the object. I guess that would be a good point to roll into empathy maybe. Yeah, so I think there's kind of two ways that you can look at that, at, at what you've just said. It's important that you know your labour is, is evident in the work that you're creating which I think comes from, you know, these kind of, you know, there's a there's a cynical side to that as well, that, you know, we need a degree of kind of respect of time spent or, 
or labor spent, labor given or whatever to, you know, to kind of justify an object or, or justify what you're doing, that, you know, it's evident that you've put in effort and... To justify your position as an artist. Yeah, that, you know, that it's not necessarily just a walk in the park. Mm. That, and to make, and I still do this even though you know it's uh, antiquated. That you know when I see <laughs> when I see paintings or drawings or whatever that I know have taken maybe you know have just happened in a kind of a very in quick succession maybe four like lines that. yeah and four lines on a canvas and people call it good you know and it's like fuck sometimes it absolutely is and that's all you need but then other times it's like okay I, I need to see the time that you you've put in and I'm not seeing that in this work. But, you know, that being said, there, there's too much to unpack there. That's just a ridiculous bias. You know, it's that's a me issue, not other people. Yeah. But then the flip side is that, you know, good things and thoughtful moments take time, they take preparation and they take work. And I think a lot of the time we're sort of denied the opportunity to do that, to honor something, you know, to have quiet times, to have restful times. Not that I'd say that like, I find painting particularly restful because I find it just like really hard and like pulling teeth most of the time. Yeah, and empathy comes into it in, you know, in a kind of myriad of way, myriad ways, but it is related to that idea of honoring something, of giving yourself and others and other things time because time is valuable and we know that. The most valuable resource yeah. you, we have. You might say, like, you can't separate time from life. No. Mm. I sort of, I go into it in my, in my master's project and it's recent research that I've been doing. But just to bring it back to that idea of trying to find an ethical framework in which we can live our lives. And, you know, I find it difficult to compartmentalize things. I don't find that helpful. What I mean by that is I don't find it helpful to live one life and to have a separate art practice. I need both those things to feel connected and aligned. And you know, painters have been fucking doing anything they can to justify painting for, <laughs> you know, ever since the death of painting, you know, um, <laughs> which, you know, arguably <laughs> happened centuries ago. Um, that's a little painting joke, everybody. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I think I get it. <laughs> no, no, no. So, you know, the there was, you know, the... Luke the big just rolling on the floor if he was here. Well, it wasn't that good. Okay. Um, yeah, what I'm talking about is that <laughs> before, or rather, sorry, after, you know, we sort of lost the religiosity of painting, that, you know, painting was there for a very specific means, and that was storytelling, and, you know, related to that is, you know, spreading the gospel, history recording. Then it became something else that was marking your existence, not only the painters, but the subject of the painter, so that was to do with wealth and class and all the rest, and then, you know, look, this is... Fucking, I don't know why I'm talking about this. <laughs> the point that I was trying to make and is then the Dutch came along. Yeah, exactly, still after exactly. Everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the point that I was trying to make is that painters have felt the need to justify what they're doing. I think all artists have, for you know, a, a very long time, because it's very easy to kind of dismiss art as uh, something unnecessary or um, indulgent. I suppose. Mm. Now, I mention that because, you know, we, in, in a way, you know, me kind of trying to articulate what happens with painting and coming across this the terminology of empathy and, and trying to relate what painting, the relationship between feeling through something and, and painting, you know, to, to kind of empathy and then broader ethical frameworks, ethics of care, feminism, you know, stuff like this to make it feel significant to me. But it's also, you know, I think it, it's there. I don't know, am I making any sense? I don't feel like I'm yeah. making any sense. I, I think you, 
do uh, like oh, as you're talking I'm thinking about all the like major art forms like theatre and mm. music and you know like they're so important for us to have it to be able to get a glimpse of a different world or perspective and yeah and to take some time out yeah. like you know um, and they can be political and they can have you know empathy care feminism in there um, maybe not explicitly or whatever mm. but the you know it is an important task to do to like take yourself seriously as a as a painter or as a performance maker so that they can spark the discussions mm. and ideas and and we can you know imagine things differently it's not it's not like counterposed to like political activity no, well, rallies it, yeah. or um, protest strikes and stuff like that i think all the best movements well yeah. they happen you know and that's and that's the other thing that seems much more kind of common than it was even 10 years ago this intersectionality you know this kind of understanding that you know mobilizing is necessary and to mobilize uh, and to make meaningful change about you know through around quality of life and all things that you know we need to embrace what every different field kind of has to offer you know and that we can't keep on drawing lines between you know groups of people or drawing lines between issues because they're all so interconnected a, a good example is that animal rights and human rights, you cannot draw a line between those things because the same issues apply. It's like if your feminism isn't intersectional, it's not feminism. If you're not sort of looking at animal rights, if you're not looking at all the different kind of human rights issues that we have, if you're not looking at trans rights, if you're not looking at, at, at racism, and then broadly patriarchy, you know, like all of these things are so interconnected and reliant upon each other, these modes of oppression. Right, because we're all part of, like to take uh, animal and human rights as the first example, like we're all part of the same ecosystem yeah and like the treatment of animals and the way animals um, and humans we're on the same planet and we like it's all connected as we see with climate change and stuff our actions have an effect on the environment yeah and so so to to the other creatures it's all it's all part of the same project so we need to think of all of that Collectively. Yeah, and I, you know, these things, and this is, you know, essentially what having an art practice boils down to these days. I feel, and I think other people relate to this, that, you know, we are looking at the grand scale of things, we're looking at all these things simultaneously, and we're able to sort of, you know, the the kind of important moments come back, come when you're able to take that macro view of things and narrow it down and make something specific that feels honest, uh, that has integrity, that feels personal, because it's through the specific that beauty comes, that you know, empathy comes, and it's through those things that we're able to connect to one another. And I always say this when I use this term, but it's because of, I don't, I don't have a better word yet, that you know, there is this universality, which is a problematic idea in a way, but there is this kind of you know, hope that it's, everybody is able to access one another through art, you know, mm -hmm. as an example, that, you know, art and all sorts of arts, you know, whatever, are able to kind of be the roots or the, you know, the, the kind of mycelium that connects us all and, you know, we're, yeah. I don't want to go back to the fucking rhizome, but <laughs> here we are, fucking Dullers and Guattari coming in strong, as always. <laughs> if I could add to that and your definition of art there seems close to the definition of, for me, of labour. Mm. Um, and it's yeah well they they want it that's what they should be they should yeah. be the same thing like and you know to take a Marxist perspective it's like through our labour through taking control of our labour mm. the conditions of our labour the uh, and and the means of production that we can find our own liberation collectively but under this current status quo we don't have any control over we're, we, we have to sell our labor um to survive mm. Mm. and Which we don't leave no time for yeah for and we don't get control so. how, over what kinds of labor or why you know we mm. don't the conditions of our labor um we have very little room to negotiate that um, but if we can if we can take control of the conditions there's so much potential for liberation and, and as you're kind of getting out Bella like beauty and connection and... it's a great thing too about a macro view that artists possess 
because mm. I wholeheartedly believe that, that. I think the power in artists and the future is that the kind of the difference in the higher order thinking we have to do is mm. well, it just reminds me of learning science really. Mm. It's, it's that backwards to start with. Yeah, I really believe as artists we're able to sit back and see these puzzle pieces and put them together mm. in ways that analysts and hard white people have never dreamed as intelligent as they are. Mm. Yeah, well I think that's why, you know, artists are so necessary, you know, that we play a role as significant mm. as scientists and things. Um, God, I was gonna, I lost my point. Oh my God, it's gone. It's all good, well I can finish up in a minute, but I'm interested to hear from you, Bella, because uh, despite me delaying us, by an hour, I've been fucking. Oh, like, uh, no, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the chat, and I think you both smashed it. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I'd like to know from you, Belly, what you think would be a good way that you'd like to proceed with things post the show. Because I think it would be cool if you sat down again after all this is said and mm. done, if we've done a few of these. You know, if we decided to get other artists together, mm. I think you, you and Maddie, you'd have great questions too. That could be a nice thing yeah. to do in the future. Yeah, I guess like. It, w it would be really nice, particularly because, you know, personally, my practice, you know, I'm talking about connection and all things to people, but, you know, it, it can be quite solitary. Mm -hmm. um, can I have one of them? Okay. Um, yeah, I think, you know, staying in touch with the people around you and what, and what your, your peers are doing is so important. Mm -hmm. And yeah, look, it's not, it's not often that you're kind of given the opportunity to just talk and have kind of, These kind of yeah, earnest conversations about what you think mm. is important um, and what's happening, you know. Um, thanks. Can I keep these? Yes. Is this the... the do you want the um, newsletter? Yeah. Is this a... Can I take that as well? Yes. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, sorry, that wasn't much of a conclusion. No. But, um, yeah, it would be nice to see what happens and, you know, I'm interested as well to bring this, these ideas that we're talking about back to picture making. Yeah. Um, you know, because that's very much what my practice is. So, uh, yeah, I would be intrigued to see how we can kind of, if, you know, if we can, mm. um, reconcile. And, I, yeah, I think that, you know, one of the reasons that I'm interested in doing this project, sorry, is partly to see that, to see how different practices, different art practices uh, can sort of come together mm. um, and produce, you know, mm. uh, produce stuff that is perhaps, you know, not left of field, but, you know, something that is unpredictable, mm. you know, because there are new variables in there. Mm. Yeah. Cool. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks.